Welcome everyone to this uh, to another session um, of, of Smart Factory. And uh, as you as you know, my my aim is really to to help um, the apparel industry to to transform and to to improve their current industrial sta um, like status and put it into more digital and more smart ways. And there are various ways of of doing that. And today, so my my aim is actually in this in in these sessions and um, in general in my business right now is really to help companies and factories to di digitize and uh, and the clients that we work with they have so many different challenges and and there's not one company that i can tell and that i work with that has the same challenges or is doing somehow the same but i truly believe and that is why i always make this uh, this first symbol here i truly believe that we are just in the beginning of complexity I truly believe that our life will become more complicated and we will have to we will fi have to find ways how to do it more smart because otherwise we will just run out of resources or profitability or we get a nervous breakdown but we cannot just do the same that we did in the years before just a little bit faster and a little bit more that's my absolute belief that this is not going to happen and digitalization can help us a lot um, today I have uh, I have two two guests and there there will be some extra guests as well. But I have two guests um, uh, um, and I'm going to explain later why um, I have these two guests. Uh, one is uh, welcome to Bina Miriam Shea. She is I hope she will um, the the connection will will stand uh, because she is uh, on vacation right now. But she made it. And Zane Schönmaker from Amsterdam. She's She's also here um, and we are going, what they will present and what are we talking about, uh, you will learn in, in a minute. Also, what I would like to remind you is, and this is, the, this is the only advertisement that you will hear from me today, is that we are running um, a course, which is a six month course, which is called The Bachelor. And it's a transformation journey. Why do we do that? Because we learn that, um, that digital transformation is not something for, Kumbaya events is not something for like one day or two day workshops and off we go. That's not happening. And that is also my, my, my personal experience when I was in Izmir, when I was doing, um, when I was managing director and doing this transformation with my team. Um, it takes actually years, sorry to say for all the impatient ones, it takes years to transform fundamentally into these, these kind of areas. And we are helping companies with this right now and it's running quite well and every um, company has a different, as I said, a different uh, story. Um, we are working with, with, with companies with like 100 people and with other companies like 25,000 people. And they have very different, different um, uh, topics to talk about and to change. But what they all have in common is that they have to find a strategy, a digital strategy to actually transform. And so this is, and, and th that was it with regard to my advertisement. And now, um, let's uh, let's dive into into this topic today's topic is automation in development areas and um, and the reason for that is because i um i i, I stumbled a, 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 um, a, upon um a statement from tukatech and we're going to talk about that also in a minute um about um about really automation in in pattern making and in pattern design, and I and as I probably some know or maybe all you know that I'm um, I'm tailor by by um, by my starting starting my career as a tailor. So I learned all the way to to really do this. Um, uh, let me see where is this? Ah, yeah. Okay. So I really learned how to how to measure, take measurements, and how to how to, um, um, in the beginning, um, really put the measurements right on the, um, on the fabric, not even thinking about a pattern, but just uh, um, making the, um, the form and putting the form right on the fabric. And then, of course, I learned how to drape and how to work with paper. And of course, I learned the, the hard way of doing pattern design and uh, putting this then from paper into digital systems, into 2D systems. And nowadays, everyone talks about 3D systems. And then something kind of strange happened because I saw an article about 
fully automatic pattern making. And it was, it was written by, uh, it was a statement done by Tukatek. And it was about like, they, they, I mean, they, there, are, they, they are, there are these moments in life when you think like, oh my gosh, if this is, if technology is so far ahead so that they can automize something that, that I spend years and years and years to learn it, that, that, that's kind of scaring and phenomenal at the same time. And so I was, uh, I was thinking like, how can, um, how can we, I mean, uh, I, first up, I thought that we have to talk about this. We have to somehow um, dive into these topics because it is something that is not, um, it's, it, it's not an, an easy thing, you know? And there is, um, it, it, it's quite complicated to do that. And at the same time, it is also changing the whole landscape. If this is possible, it's changing the whole landscape of product development. Like how much can we automize um, in these areas? And I would like to draw your attention to this kind of slide, which is uh, coming from Dr. Peter Diamandis. I don't know if you have heard about him, but he is uh, he's also the co-founder of um, the XPRIZE. He's also the co-founder of the Singularity University. Uh, he is an unbelievable entrepreneur. He has um, built literally like tens of companies. Uh, he's a startup, really a phenomenon. He is a very close friend from Elon Musk. And he has um, done something which, attract, which I liked already like four or five years ago when I saw this the first time. And he calls this the CD, the 60s of exponential growth. And the thing what he says is basically like when you put something physical into a digital context, then a certain development or a certain roadmap starts for this product or for this kind of transformation. And the first thing is that when, when you digitize something, then you can go on scale, which you cannot easily do physical. Then you will see growth rates which are below the radar and we know this i mean um, no one would have thought um, i mean especially nokia wouldn't wouldn't have thought that apple as a software company would completely crash and ruin their phone business so there are growth there are companies growing and doing something that is below the radar that we just don't understand and we don't that we we don't recognize this then comes the disruption. I mean, things change and, um, and, and all of a sudden, and that is what we have seen with the iPhone versus uh, BlackBerry and, uh, and others, all of a sudden things uh, change and the landscape changes completely. And then something else happens very much is um, things are, the more we scale on, on these topics, the more um, value is de demonetized and dematerialized and democratized. And one example for that is Wikipedia. I mean, in the past, you would have to buy a huge library of books for knowledge, or you would have to go into databases and buy stuff. And today you get basically everything for free. I mean, you have, we have an unbelievable access nowadays to, to data and material, even um, scientific um, 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 readings and, and, and books and something like that. We have an unbelievable access basically for free or for very little money. So this democratization is the end of such a, of this development. And now coming back to, um, and, and, and then there was something else that I thought is like, how far can we sometimes look into the future when we think about automation and then how long sometimes it actually takes to automate something. And that adds a little bit to this, to this um, uh, first part here, which is the deceptive growth. Like when we think about this, I mean, I'm a big um, uh, um, a Star a Starship Enterprise fan, Star Trek fan. And uh, I loved always this kind of replicator because you would just say, I want a hamburger. And then it takes 10 seconds and you get the hamburger. And, and Nestle was trying also to build something like this replicator for food. And I remember I read also articles about this. This is actually from 2014. And they said at that time, they said, ah, oh, yeah, you know, we are going to build these kind of replicators for nutrition and something. And you will see like in a couple of years, everyone will have this kind of nutrition automat in, in his kitchen. 
Honestly speaking, I didn't see too many of these automations and automats in kitchen um, until now, which means like sometimes we exaggerate with automation and we, we have fancy ideas which don't make it. But sometimes it happens that all of a sudden um, yeah. uh, things make a, make a huge step. Yes. And that is, the, that is today's topic. Today, I would like to discuss um, and talk to my, um, to my guests. And also, I want to discuss with you, with, you, with the audience um, today for me. about, about um, automation in product development. And with that um, being said, I would like to uh, start with uh, Bina, maybe. All right, so let's get started. Um, first of all, thank you very much for the invite to this talk, Shaking and Breaking, All Patterns, New Technologies, New Tools and Technologies with Automation. My name is Bina Miriam Shea, and I'm presenting in the name of Tukata. I have a brief agenda here. I'm going to talk about who we are, um, the current challenges within our industry, um, automation, of course, our digital solution. I have uh, Sona John, the founder of Sotex, um, who is going to explain a little bit deeper what the Sotex and Tika Tech collaboration is going to be. I have as well Cheryl um, with Welts joining, um, an APM user who's talking about the user experience. And I'm going to give you something at the end to think about. So let's get started. Um, Tuga Tech is an innovative, um, disruptive tech company for those who don't know us until now. <laughs> Um, we have offices all over the globe, starting from the Asian office in India, Sri Lanka, Pakistan. The head office is in Los Angeles. Uh, we have one in New York as well. And I'm working out of the European office um, in Barcelona. Having a disruptive company culture doesn't necessarily need to be that everyone is a travel taker, right? But Rather than fixing old technologies, we're focusing on the simple way of doing things. Um, we are 25 years on the market and a group of engineers and consultants providing customized solutions for our clients. We are a true end-to-end -end solution. So what does that mean? Um, we having products where, which are in the product development area, of collaboration and garment manufacturing, as you can see over here. So this includes pattern um, making, grading, market making, and virtual sampling. And um, we also develop machinery for automated fabric uh, spreading, cutting, as well as unit production uh, system to optimize through a needle time. But um, let's go back to our topic. We are living um, in a constant change, right? Every, everything, it doesn't really matter what area you're taking a look to, it's changing. And we have to go with it. So we're deciding for something or we're not. So we take every time if we say yes or no, we take a decision, right? So I believe it's on us to use old patterns and add new tools. So, but back to the product development. And I wanna mark some challenges here. Before we're gonna go deeper into the technology area, we should understand uh, where are the challenges, right? So each step of our current cycle, how we produce our garments, is a um, waste, we're wasting garments, right? So that ultimately leads to dumping unsold goods. And on the other hand, we have to understand one other thing. Um, vendors and friends are frustrated. Um, everyone thinks that the other one is not competent. But if you drill it down and you take a close look, there are fundamental problems because they're not comparing the same body. One is comparing the body form and the other one is comparing the living 
like a physical model, right? So having that all set and um, we adding problem solving um, to our topic, right? We are literally pushed to think out of the box. So let's have a look to that video here. Think differently and reverse the product development process. Instead of starting from a sketch, pattern, or physical sample, start from a 3D fashion asset. Tuka Web provides a variety of ready-made 3D templates that were made from real 2D CAD patterns approved for fit. Choose a style, then choose a model, and bring the blank garment into the Tuka 3D Designer Edition Visualizer software. Create colorways with your own artwork and visualize the results instantly. Integrate with your favorite graphic design software such as Adobe Photoshop and view multiple colorways at one time. Render your designs directly in the software and create 3D line sheets. Make comments and approve styles before any physical sampling is done. After a design is approved by the entire team, purchase the related pattern for $5 on Tuka Web. Make minor modifications in the intuitive Tuka CAD software, then immediately go to production. Instead of spending several days and thousands of dollars on the cost of development, design new products in only one hour for less than $15. Reverse the development process. Think differently. So what we have now, um, we have the 3D um, asset. We have a pattern. But what do we miss here to close the whole uh, cycle? Well, we definitely need a fabric, a supply chain. So um, I want to invite now um, Sono Jan, uh, the founder of Sotex. Um, Welcome. It's a supply supply chain platform and present a little bit and explain a little bit um, about the collaboration we're doing. Okay. Thank you so much, Pina, for um, giving a lovely introduction. And thank you, Mr. Jonathan, for having us on the show with everyone. So okay. I want to just uh, start by, uh, you know, introducing Sotex to everyone and how the entire model works uh, along with Tuka Tech. Yes. So Sodex is basically a digital textile ecosystem where uh, we have fashion buyers, manufacturers, mills, materials, and allied services all coming together. And they all collaborate as a part of digital textile ecosystem. Why did we do this? Uh, what we do, uh, this is basically from my own journey of being in the textile 20 years as a textile entrepreneur and being into the uh, areas where I personally face a lot of challenges in the industry. I know the industry is about $3 trillion globally and 20% uh, of the businesses are just online and out of that only 10% are there on the digital platform. And the rest of us struggle on various areas of finding customers, whether it is uh, you know, awareness of changing trends, capacities, high development cost, um, sitting on the absolute inventory and lack of un unavailable uh, industry focused knowledge. So these are some of the challenges where, which we brought in together and we created a platform uh, which is now providing a cutting edge tools and is making fashion industry, uh, fashion industry uh, more efficient. What it improves is digital connectivity with the textile ecosystem, tech and AI driven matchmaking between the buyers and sellers, industry knowledge and changing trends, reduces the surplus stock capacity uh, time consuming designing in the development process and unlocks the working capital for the growth. Uh, what we are trying to bring the changes on the life cycle of the textiles, how people can and the businesses can move away from the touch and feel uh, and reduce the consumption of natural resources. Finally, putting a less impact on the environment and moving towards more sustainable areas. As a textile ecosystem, we offer these six areas uh, on our application, which is on lead generation, buyer supplier connections, 
digital profiling, surplus talk, 3D designing and training and development. Uh, so these are all the six areas we're bringing in together. And now I want to just uh, share uh, what our collaboration with Tukatek is. But before I share that, I want to share a quick small video of how our digital sourcing is making an impact in today's environment. shown you is how the process of sourcing has been automated in the ecosystem and how it's going to transform the textile businesses in the near future. Now, in, in lieu of how the automation is coming up in the ecosystem, what we have collaborated and done with uh, Tuka Tech is reverse the design sourcing process. Now, what you've seen with uh, Bina and what she's shown out to you is the fact that how digital sourcing can make an impact. Um, so this is how what we collaborated with Tukatek, and we created a module where not only a businesses can create 3D designs and present with the customers, but they don't even have to buy a physical fabrics or trims. They just simply have to come to the platform, pick up the samples, uh, virtual samples which are there available from the mills and the suppliers from the South Asian market. And they can pick up, they can choose, they can go to the Tuka, use their 3D software, create the line sheets, present to the customers. Once you present to the customers and the customers like it from whatever they like it on the collection, then you go for a physical sampling product. You can backtrack the complete sourcing process, where the fabric came from, where the trims came from, where the suppliers are, what is available in the ecosystem. Let me share a quick video of how this complete process works. This is just about one minute more video that I can show to everyone. Fast track your design and development process with Sotex Design Resources and Tuka Tech Technology. This is the world's first digital platform where everyone in the supply chain collaborates with real data. Design, develop, approve, show, sell, and then make your product. Instead of starting from a sketch, pattern, or physical sample, start from digital fashion design templates. Choose from Tukatek's library of ready-made 3D garments or find the model you want to design for, then shop styles made to fit that model. Browse dozens of fabric and trims categories in the Sotex Materials Catalog. Save images of the materials to your computer. These high quality images represent physical materials so you can achieve the exact same look in real life production. Bring the blank garment into the Tuka 3D Designer Edition Visualizer software. Integrate with your favorite graphic design software to create colorways with these digital materials. Fill pattern pieces with fabric repeats and visualize the results instantly. Arrange embellishments, embroideries, and trims.
Play with the placement until you are satisfied with the look. Create multiple colorways and view them all at once in the 3D viewer. Create 3D line sheets to share styles and feedback before physical sampling or even use 3D renders as visuals for your e-commerce site. When you're ready to go to production, purchase the 2D CAD pattern for the style for only $5. Do any pre-production work in the intuitive Tuka CAD software for pattern making, grading, and marker making. Order physical fabrics and trims on the SoTech site and get ready to make your visualization a reality. Instead of spending several weeks and thousands of dollars on the cost of development, design new products with material variations in only a couple of hours. Reverse the development process. Think differently with the Digital Design Lab powered by Tugatech and Sotex. So um, in the entire process, what you've seen again is uh, on the fact that um, this is just a simple process where the businesses, especially the fashion businesses and the fabric mills, they can both collaborate together where the fabric mills can just put in their virtual designs and the virtual designs can be adopted virtually and the Designers or the small businesses, they don't have to even buy physical samples, just, just have to pick up the samples and use it on uh, the uh, tool and present it to the customers. Once it goes approved, you go and take the production. And all this solution is available at one of the world's cheapest cost. And yes, it is at the cheapest cost in the world, 3D with the, uh, with the complete uh, cloud-based uh, sourcing solution for just $499. That's, that, 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 that's sorry to interrupt immediately. That's a, such a bold statement that you make here. <laughs> yes. Like re reversing the complete, complete ecosystem, bypassing, I don't know, probably five to 10 departments and companies and saying, I can design everything as I wish. And then if people say yes to it, which means like real customers like it, then you start doing, uh, then you start caring about production, right? That's right. Wow. That's uh, kind of, uh, think about the Peter Diamandis demonetization and democratization <laughs> curve. That's uh, actually far ahead, I must say. It's yeah. far ahead. Just one uh, provoking question. If I have, for example, if I'm so proud about my fit and my style and my pattern, could I theoretically also use that? Or can I only use what is in the library? Yet. Let me let me answer that question. <laughs> <laughs> um, the DE comes with different, um, yeah, 3D assets, assets, right? Mm -hmm. So what we also have, if you want to uh, get your own 3D styles, basically in your software to sample that, we have two Cassandras as well, where you actually, of course, you need to get charged for like somehow short, um, pay for these uh, 3D assets. Uh, however, we are able to give you these. Wow, cool. Very nice. So it's kind of a nice awesome example of, uh, of, uh, of automation. Yeah. Cool. All right. So we're going to go ahead, I guess. So, and we're already at the APM. Um, since we're reversing the whole process, I'm gonna do it also like that, right? So um, it's our automated uh, pattern making tool, which is definitely democratization because accessibility, as you could see all the tools we are presenting today is um, accessible for small money for everyone, right? However, um, it depends on the perspective, how you look at change, as I said before, and how you look at new tools, right? Are you seeing it as a replacement or as a facilitation? And you can invest the time you have now for other stuff, thinking about um, we're in a quick changing, working in a quick changing environment, um, that we're creative people. So why don't we focus on that then? So I'm going to play this video and you then have the understanding what the APM is. And then we get it from there. 
The TukaCAD automatic pattern making and automatic marker making system allow you to gain more with less work. In only a few minutes, automatically generate graded patterns and create markers that calculate the yield of a garment in order to estimate cost. Simply take the measurements from any tech pack and input the numbers into the TukaCAD APM module. Choose from basic men's and women's styles and add as many sizes as needed. With the click of a button, a graded pattern will automatically be generated. Add any necessary shrinkage, then save the pattern to create a marker. Set the marker size, determine the number of bundles per size, and let the automatic marker making system do the work for you. While the system is creating a marker, create reports for a tech pack such as a detailed pattern card. After the marker is complete, add a yield report to the tech pack you already started. Export reports to Excel for easy editing, viewing, and sharing. View the yield per bundle, the number of pieces per bundle, and even a mini marker. Minimal effort is required to receive the information needed for basic costing. Make your production process easier and faster and subscribe to TukaCAD APM on Tuka Web today. TukaCAD APM, the apparel industry's first automatic pattern making system. So now we know how the system is working, how the tools are, right? Um, but I want now to change the perspective into how a user would actually see it, right? I want to invite now to talk Sherry Well. Um, she is working at a company in Machine, um, based in UK, right? Yes, welcome, Cheryl. Oh, really? Well, thanks for joining. Um, thanks for having me. Um, can you please introduce very shortly yourself? My name is Cheryl Wells and I work in a pattern department at Indochine. We are based here in the UK in their location. Um, I originally come from a lingerie um, background. I've since transitioned over into their women's, women's wear department. Um, and I was quite lucky in the, um, in the aspect that when I joined Indochine, they were just trying, we were the last location here in the UK to transition over and use Tuka from Gerber. So it was great in that aspect that I, when I joined, we got, um, I got the chance to um, start at the very beginning with it. So you guys implemented APM. Um, yeah. Would you like to share your story about implementation, tra training? Yeah, just tell how the whole process went. It went really smoothly with um, implementation in terms of like training. So a lot of us are um, experienced in different levels. So it was great in the aspect that when we transitioned over, we were all at the very beginning. And the good thing is with um, Tuka Tech, we had the ability to do an e-course, which we were enrolled in an academy. Um, so we did that in our own time. And then we also did on the job training, which Bina is my trainer. So everything went really smoothly. It was great in the aspect that um we got to sort of go through the e-course in our own time um, and um unfortunately at the beginning of august when i transitioned over i ended up into um isolation so the good thing is is that the e-course is accessible wherever you are and bina was always on hand to support and answer any questions immediately with any of the tools that i was unsure about any of the training any of the questions i had with regarding to the e-course I love the opportunity to go back and forth to watch the videos as many times as I needed to understand um, the processes that um, obviously you took are implemented um, and use this through like the program to like achieve the implementation with APM. And I highly recommend it for companies moving forward because they can create reference blocks to use based on their own design. So here in um, the UK, we use we are multi product. However, we use a, we create a lot of dresses. So the good thing is, is that we could base our blocks off our um, own designs. And then this ensured that other departments were able to use it regarding the information that we had on these blocks. So this will make it easier for other departments in, a, in our business to access the information and be able to build and proceed th further depending on the needs that they require. It is a long process though, I do, I would say that, but we are at a point where we're slowly implementing it. So it's working out a lot better than how we used to work because some of our pattern cutters are manual. So it's transitioning over. It's all about working smarter, not harder. 
<laughs> yeah, that's a very, very important statement. <laughs> oh my, we should cut this out for, for the LinkedIn, LinkedIn post. We should work smarter, not harder. Absolutely, yeah, sure. you got 100%. <laughs> thousand points on that. <laughs> Do you very have cool. other questions, Joachim? I would like to draw the attention now to something also uh, which is quite different, but also thinking about automation. And that's why I'm happy to have Zane here because she is actually uh, representing another company um, who does another kind of automation in another way. And that is also what we learn in this digital transformation era is that there are lots of different ways to achieve what we want which is be smarter, not harder, working smarter, not harder. I love this, <laughs> I love this, Cheryl. Um, so so, um, so before we get a little bit into chit chat, Zane, do you want to present what you, what, uh, what you are doing? And maybe also then we can determine what's different to what we have just seen before. Yeah, of course. Um, well, what we do, my company is called Tech Tailors and we automate made to measure pattern generation which is quite a mouthful, I know. Um, and to answer your question, Joachim, I think what we do is we add on to uh, what Tukatuk has already built or other pattern development systems, because our aim is to kind of democratize um, custom pattern making. And mm -hmm. I think that's what's so great about Tukatuk as well, is that it's de-skilling the process in a sense. It's making it more accessible. Um, and I think that's really great. And that's also what the fashion industry needs. So we didn't have the, the usual path uh, to get to a software company, I would say. We started as a fashion brand. And what we did is we had made to measure formal wear. So the main thing we sold was dresses for work. Mind you, we had zero experience in this industry. We had no clue. I started this company with my mom out of just necessity because I started working. I have a background in economics and I just couldn't find nice things to wear to work. And my mom has a background in sewing. So she's like, I'll make you a couple of dresses. Um, well, that escalated quickly. Uh, what we started to do is uh, just sell so many dresses to our friends, our family, our colleagues. And what we would do is they would come to my parents' living room. I would take their measurements and we would manually adjust the pattern. Mind you, this was like eight years ago. This process took forever, as you can imagine, especially with the technology we have nowadays. So we decided why not automate this process? And uh, what we wanted to do is uh, program the patterns instead of drawing them by hand. Because we thought if you have a parametric pattern, so it's based on variables, you can just insert the measurements of the client and the pattern will automatically adjust to a tailor-made pattern for that client. Um, however, this was easier said than done. We thought like it might take us a year it took seven years because uh, what we did is we created a completely new pattern drawing technique. Like existing pattern drawing technique is a hundred years old and it's based on move a quarter inch down, move an inch to the left. It's like the logic behind it is, is well, in my opinion, strange. Um, so we decided to create a completely new pattern drawing technique. I call it, so, sorry to interrupt, Zane. I wouldn't yeah. call it strange. It was contemporary at that time. At the time, yes, but, but at I the mean, time it was that that, yeah. that was the hot shit of this time, really. Like this was it, you know. Yeah, um, but we we noticed that it's not really compatible with, um, for example, the input you get from three D scanning apps on your phone. Um, it it was just hard to uh, integrate with all the existing technology, so we decided to create a new way of constructing these patterns. And we made them parametric so that, that it would not be um, like suitable for grading in the sense that you could have an extra small to an extra large. No, you can make it into any size, whether you're pear shaped or uh, round shaped or whatever, it doesn't matter. Um, this took seven years of testing and adjusting. So what we would do is we would create a pattern for a customer. I would do a fitting session. I would tell my mom like, okay, it needs to be adjusted in place A, B and C she would change that in the algorithm and so forth and so on until our returns were down to just 1%. So all the orders we sent out, only 1% got returned to us because they either didn't like it or didn't fit them well enough. Now, to give you some reference points, the average industry, uh, the industry average is between 30 and 50% of returns, mm -hmm. um, which is what cost us in the past year to consider a new plan 
which was selling our algorithm to fashion brands to enable them to become online tailors. Because in our opinion, if you just produce what you actually sell and you tailor make it to the client, then you minimize waste, you minimize returns, and you maximize size inclusion. Because that's, I think, another issue of today is that it's, it's, it's absurd to me that we once thought it was a good idea to fit 7 billion people into five standard sizes. And, and we know that it, that it doesn't work. I mean, we have like, um, <laughs> I remember the, we had when, when I was working at Boss, for, for the most classical suits, we would have like 70 different sizes. Of course, no one would buy them because mm -hmm. you, the, 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 there was literally no retailer who could, who, who could have a warehouse like that. No, uh, it's but, very expensive. Uh, but it, it, it's, uh, it's, it's true. Like um, really thinking about fit. And if you want to have a real nice fit, then, then you can have even 100 sizes and it's probably not enough. No, because to put it no, it's like a good point here. Mm -hmm. too mathematical, it's like the, the, um, the standard deviation is just too high. Mm -hmm. We're not all the same. We have variations and um, it's so hard to uh, make a pattern that fits very well. And I'm going to show that later on in this presentation. Yeah. Um, but okay, this was like our plan. Okay, we're going to mm -hmm. sell this to fashion brands. We're going to make sure that there are going to be moss tailors. Yeah. Again, we had zero experience in this part of the industry because we'd spent the last seven years in the fashion uh, part, not the tech part of it. So there were a few hurdles along the way. Uh, one of the things was that we noticed that most pattern makers do not know how to work with parametric patterns because they, they look different. They're different to edit. Existing software was also not really user-friendly for parametric patterns. Plus, we noticed that brands and factories are loyal to the software they have in place. And so they're not that keen on changing it. And it's difficult to convince them to do so. Sure. Which, yeah, um, this was like, this took a year of research to get to this slide, basically. But hey, <laughs> we got there eventually. <laughs> um, which is why our solution now is automated pattern conversion. And I'm going to get into much more detail in a few slides. But in a uh, in big picture sense, it's completely agnostic. So it's compatible with any type of pattern development software and it's fully automatic. There's no human intervention required. So no manual checkups, adjustments, nothing. And it's suitable for unbalanced figures. Um, and that's, I think, where grading is too uh, limited. I'll show you that in a second. But the way we envision it, the, like the future of retail basically, is that customers just go to any website they customize their, let's say, a T-shirt, so you can adjust sleeve length, neckline, color, just the way you like it. And instead of sort ordering a size medium, you can just order a size U. So what you can do is fill in your height, weight, age, and shoe size. For men, for women, it's a bra size instead of shoe size. And from that, a 3D avatar of you is generated. Well, that's not our company. Other software companies are doing that, but that gives us the input we need later on. But from a customer perspective, you just fill in this super brief questionnaire. It doesn't even take a minute. And then you only have to wait because our production partners um, are very uh, quick in optimizing made-to-order production. So it only takes one to 14 days to get a completely tailor-made item to your doorstep. Mm -hmm. By the way, uh, just to add on that, um, I mean, you just said, I mean, your, your returns dropped to 1%. Um, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm uh, also in touch um, frequently with Son of a Tailor. Yep. They have a return rate of 1.5%. So yep. and that, that adds also to your argument, like saying, okay, we, if, you, if you really have the right algorithms, then, um, then you, you will please the customers with this data much better than with uh, traditional grading. That's absolutely true. Yeah, and I think what's important to note here is that I don't think we're ever going to be able to eliminate returns completely because sometimes oh, you order something and yeah. if you just don't like the style or you don't like the fabric, I mean, oh, it's, yeah, sure. I, yeah, there's always going to be a small percentage of returns, but imagine the waste we'd save if we go from 50% to let's say 5%. That's from an environmental perspective, yeah, yeah, super. already mm -hmm. enormous. Mm -hmm. um, not to mention that we as customers don't have to go back to the post office to return our packaging packages. Um, from the back end, it's going to look a little different than what most uh, people in the industry, I think, are used to. Because what you do now is you design a pattern in your preferred software, and you upload it to our software. 
And then what we do is we convert this pattern to a parametric pattern. So say you send us a pattern in size medium, we convert it to something that's completely dynamic and we save it in your library. And then when an order uh, comes in online, we use the measurements from the client to adjust this pattern and we send it back to you, to the marker software, to the production system, whatever kind of software you have in place. Joachim, are you with me so far? Should I yes, explain yes, more yes. about I'm, this? I'm just thinking, I, I was just thinking like you sneak into a process of, mm -hmm. of, a, of a selling, or let's say of a design process and, and yeah. individualize it. And then it just goes on. So it's a, it's a very interesting approach of um, yeah, I think, skilling and automation. Yeah, and what we envision is that you kind we built this on top of existing pattern software. Yeah, yeah I got so it. This I, is really interesting. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's why I think it was so great what Bina was showing with that you have this, this library of templates that you can just use and adjust because you can still do that. And then instead of grading it from a size extra small to extra large, you could also send it to us and then we generate a custom pattern for every order that comes in. Mm -hmm. Yeah, got it. Um, it's a bit scary sometimes when listening to this presentation, <laughs> but, it's, uh, but at the same time, it's also fascinating. Yeah, and the, the funny thing is it's also doable because yeah, I know, I know. Care, I've been <laughs> introducing this to people and they told me I was like batshit crazy. Um, and I told them like, no, we can actually do this. And now we're working with different production partners to actually make this a reality. Yeah, yeah sure. Um, and I that's what I love also. Yeah, go ahead. So obviously my background is lingerie. So um, yeah, I'm going to ask on that kind of aspect. Yeah. Um, so you said you could use it for bras. Now, obviously we- um, No, it's not for underwear yet. It's not? It's No, it's for uh, upper wear. So like dresses, t-shirt, jackets, pants. Uh, oh. We don't have it for underwear yet. Oh, I thought you said that just a few- Oh, I'm sorry. Then maybe I misspoke, but it, the only thing we don't have it for is underwear actually. We might do that in the future as well. Um, oh. Cause I think it's really interesting. No worries. Uh, but we don't have it at this moment. Okay. Um, and I'm going to illustrate a little bit what, how what we do is different from grading. And we're going to use this wonderful Mr. B as an example. Um, because what you see is that Mr. B is a standard size medium, except for his waist. His waist is a size extra large. So he has a bit of a stomach. Um, these avatars are, by the way, created in uh, Browseware. And what I'm going to do now is show you the size comparison. Because if we would dress Mr. B in a medium, the t-shirt would be good for his shoulders and his chest, but it's too tight around his stomach, causing the t-shirt to creep up and making it also too short. If we would dress him in a size extra large, what you can see is that it's good for his stomach, but it's too wide for his chest and the sleeves are also too wide. Plus the t-shirt is too long. So neither of them are ideal. Enter made to measure t-shirts. What you see, uh, here is that the shoulder is good, the sleeve length uh, width is good, the length is good, and it has space for his stomach. And this is, of course, like a relatively simple t-shirt, but I'm going to show you the pattern difference that this has, because traditional grading, this is a medium-sized t-shirt, allows you to shift rings proportionally, which is great if you have a balanced figure. But if your, your figure is slightly not balanced, then grading becomes tricky. Um, here I have the pattern comparison for you between a size medium, that's the blue lines that you see, and a made to measure size, that's a green line that you see. Now what we did is for the back of the shirt, nothing changed. The medium and the made to measure are exactly the same. But for the front, we just adjusted several things because we needed to make a bigger uh, waistline, but we didn't want to affect the um, yeah, what do you call this? Like the, the armhole, I, that's probably not the correct term. So if anyone has it, please correct me. <laughs> um, but that was okay. So we didn't want to make that larger, which is what you standardly do for grading. If you make the waist bigger, then the armhole also becomes bigger. And what we also did is the bottom hem is now curved for this person because he has a stomach that we have to account for. But we don't want to make the front longer than the back, obviously, because that would look strange, which is why the side seams are at an angle. And this is how, if you can see, imagine like how complicated it is to get a t-shirt right. Just imagine what it's like for a jacket or a dress or a jumpsuit, let's say. 
Um, so this is also why it took us quite a lot of years to get it right for every type of garment and for every type of shape. Um, but our end goal is to make sure that anyone from H&M to Gucci is only selling made to measure items. And I think with our technology and with Tukatex technology and the smart factories, this is like not, no longer a dream. It can actually be a reality. So our slogan is tailoring for the many, not the few. Cool. Now, I mean, we have seen here, uh, I think what we have seen here is that coming back to this slide, but coming back to this slide, what we see with these examples here is that with digitalization, and that is the first part here, really the number one, when you start think, when you start putting physical content and physical processes and physical ideas and products into a digital concept or mindset or like this environment, when you start switching or building this second ecosystem, the digitalization, then a whole new um, um, development and, and roadmap appears. And that is what, what, what I find fascinating that something that we have uh, that we have spent for years and years to to develop let's say and to nurture and also to celebrate i mean zana you just said it took me one year to find out what pattern makers would want and don't want and so you know we we uh, we um pattern makers and and um and 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 developers are very like very traditional in their way of thinking you know, and they like this, they celebrate this. And why? Because they spend sometimes 20, 30, 40 years in, in developing their experience. And now we see um, digitalization coming in, in a way that is actually demo democratizing and demonetizing also um, whole areas of work. You know, and we have to accept that. I mean, there's no, there's, there's no way, and I'm not saying that this is great or that this is bad. That is something we cannot deny. <clears throat> we have to accept that right now we live in a world where automation and digitalization is, is changing really fundamentally the way how we work together and how we bypass also sometimes um, um, glorious departments and, and experience um, with new technology and new things. So, um, so let's, have a, let's have a view on, on the chat. Uh, do we have any technology which can automate the physical process of garment checking after it's stitched and eliminate the various checking stations in the factory? That is also something I can tell you, I have a very nice connection and I'm hoping that I can invite this this guy to one of my further sessions, because when it comes to quality checks uh, with image processing, um, there are, there's lots of things going on uh, and I'm going to invite him. So, so stay tuned and, and come back. And uh, uh, Mainak, we, we, will, uh, we, will, we will have an answer to that. Uh, there, there, is lots of, there are lots of things going on when it comes to uh, image processing and, and really checking quality with uh, image processing. Uh, on the shop floor, uh, and it is very interesting. Um, uh, Shurjun, can I say something? Can I contribute? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so this is just in addition to uh, some of the questions which have been popped out on the screen relating to the, uh, the solutions around the Tukatek, and um, I want to just contribute towards from the SOTEC side. Um, for all the audience, uh, there is a lot of uh, digitization which is happening around in the tech area and uh, what is more important the fact that how soon people adopt to these technologies and how soon they move away from the conventional system so one of the questions that came in is how people can uh, still do a touch and feel and i tried answering the fact that this is a first stage process where you eliminate the wastage of creating a sample without having the uh, the understanding of what the customer is asking for. So what the solutions gives you is the fact that how the visualization can make sure that your design, your fit, your color, your waistline, everything is to what your customer can expect and see it digitally. Once they're digitally 
the product has been approved, then of course you can go in for the physical sample or share the samples or fabrics, whatever is uh, convenient to your customer. But these are how the positioning of the digitization can come in. They cannot take away every single process out of the physical production line, but they can take away a few things and make your process go more faster, especially when it comes to designing, the approval, the, uh, the, the, the process of taking things where you need to depend upon a third party, which is your supply chain, to give you a price or a design. So that process can be turned out to be more faster. Yes, in terms of pricing, the process is, uh, yeah, it is not cheaper. We also took a lot of time in figuring it out as to how we can make it much more affordable, especially for South Asian market, where these kind of solutions are much more needed because people in the West, they do adopt to the technologies much more faster than um, what we have here. But what we wanted to make sure is how a small businesses, and especially a small and medium businesses where people are more on a hands-on kind of an approach, how they can adopt to these technologies and how they can try it at least, because till the time you don't try it, you don't want to buy and commit to that thing. So we have made that provision of where people can try even it on a SaaS based model. And of course, uh, Tukadek has, and the team, uh, the founder, Mr. Ram Sarina, has been very kind enough to extend that kind of feature uh, where these kind of technologies can be brought in and can be uh, you know, taken out to uh, a bigger set of uh, people and businesses across. And um, that's what I wanted to ask and uh, you know, share uh, in case anybody wants to understand how Sotex is making a difference through these technologies, please reach out to us on LinkedIn or you can uh, visit us on Sotex.com. Thank yeah. you so much. <laughs> Absolutely. And you touched one point, uh, which I also feel when, when, when talking to my clients, which is, I mean, I have clients in Portugal, and this is a way different talk than talking to clients in Sri Lanka, Bangladesh, Pakistan, or India, or other countries. Every country has a country code, and they have a behavior of dealing with technology. And sometimes people think like, oh my gosh, the technology is coming now. I mean, Elon Musk is aiming to fly to Mars. So can I afford this? Uh, can I start? Do I overwhelm my people? Um, do I even understand this? And I always tell them, listen, this is not, I mean, you will not become the next SpaceX in, of Bangladesh. That's not your aim. Your aim is to stay relevant in the apparel industry. And your aim is to adapt to technology from the 21st century and not just thinking about lean, which was basically invented in the middle of the last century. So one thing um, that, that I guess is, is really important here, and you just addressed that, is, is finding the appropriate technology for your singular use case in an appropriate price range. You cannot have the cutting edge technology in a, in, in a low wage country when you cannot have sensors on sewing machines for $500 when the monthly wage of your employee is like 150 it never will pay back that's not going to work so it is very important for everyone to understand that digitalization is is uh, it has to be has to be done smart to say it again in Cheryl's word um, words um, to ha you, you have to work smart and you have to also decide smart for technology use so that it, it, it actually creates value and is not just fancy is not just nice and at the same time, um, uh, it, I guess it is important to stay relevant as a, as a, in your personality, not looking for mm -hmm. random technology that everyone will use. Because if, as Peter Thiel once said, competition is for losers. If you do what everyone does, then, you're not, then you will only fight for price. And that is also a trap. So, so there, there, there must be a good strategy underlying to actually implement the right technology uh, for the right uh, for the right people and the right businesses there so with that sorry Bina? There was one more question ah, there was one question yes yes i'm there Go for yes. it. <laughs> yeah yeah my question is very simple because i faced the same similar situation when we are dealing with some one of my esteemed client the reason is that uh, our client got a design developed by picked up a design that was uh, was developed on wool, cashmere, right now. And then uh, he asked us that whether we can convert that same design to the uh, to cotton fabric. Now, my question to you, ma'am, is that 
from wool to cotton the mm-hmm. every dimensions are changing is it incorporated in your system because when we'll ultimately calculate the fabric uh, yardage and all sort of stuff will that be included in your uh, software my very simple question is that like um you can use it as after wash basically i mean it has a different shrinkage value i guess yeah yeah yeah, yeah. So that that's the, that's the point yeah the answer i mean um you can shrink them just one piece or to what direction you want to shrink you use yeah. the same you use the same uh fabric just rename like i would work from the same block pattern and by adding the shrinkage you're adding whatever fabric you're using and save it again and by doing so it has the name tag on it a description and you are clear well aware what you're doing okay okay i get it i get it thank you ma'am thank you very much thank you <laughs> great so um ladies and gentlemen time's really up thanks again for all the um the 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 presentations from zana from bina from sonil and of course from cheryl be smart and not hard <laughs> and uh, and thanks again for listening and i hope you you um join in uh, next time which is um always the last tuesday 2 c 2 pm cet of the month and um with that being said enjoy the rest of the week um move it there's always this this motto that i say okay I, we should not just listen to things we should listen and then think about okay how can i put bits and pieces of what i have just heard into my into my daily life and into my business so that it makes sense what we have learned and um, and digested so thanks again uh, hope to see you soon take care uh, stay healthy and see you see you next time